shocked and infuriated while watching the video of a Minneapolis police officer sit on the knee of George Floyd's neck for more than nine minutes. In fact, we ought to still be infuriated and still be bothered by it, even two years after the fact. That image is seared in the minds of people worldwide. In life, George was um, just like you and I, okay? Uh, but he was some, and was someone who was striving to do even better. Raised in Houston's third ward, the only thing that could have been better if he had been born in the four four. <laughs> but raised in the third ward, in CUNY homes, nicknamed Big Friendly by his classmates at Jack Yates High School, his death was deeply personal deeply personal for the family, deeply personal for me, and I'm sure for all of us. Coming from a neighborhood in Houston, not unlike Third Ward, having experienced the same kind of inequities and systemic racism as he did. George Floyd could have been your friend, your brother, your neighbor, you name it. The two years since his death have been a time of transformation for Houston, our nation, and the world. And who would have thought, Paula, that on the day that we celebrate and remember him, that yesterday, in our state, in our country, we would also be praying and um, about 19 of our children killed in Uvalde, Texas, and two other adults. And I say our kids intentionally. They were our children. Doesn't matter what they look like. Doesn't matter their social economic status. They were our children just yesterday. And then who would have thought two weeks ago, 10 African Americans in a grocery store in Buffalo would be mowed down. And they were our brothers and our sisters. And the same sort of hate that killed George Floyd was the same sort of hate that took the lives of 19 of our children and 10 of our African brothers and sisters in Buffalo. And we can do better. Superintendent House, every day when we look at our children and we ask ourselves, what will they be down the road? Now we have to ask ourselves, will they be here tomorrow? Or will they be here at the end of the day? For the Floyd family, Moving from the CUNY homes to Minneapolis. I'm sure you all thought next week, next month, next year, we would see him again. And who would have thought, who would have thought that he would have been killed on the streets by a member of law enforcement? Who would have thought? So as a people, we are grasped with it. And it is important that we constantly reflect and remember. Because if we don't, we'll become numb to it. And we'll just hear it and go about our business. And that can never be. Justice was served when Minnesota jury convicted George Floyd's murderers. But our work continues to find ways to make our society more equitable, better, and safer for everyone. We cannot bring George back, but we can demand better for our country. His death sparked a movement for conversations about race, 
policing reform, and social justice. And in part, that's the reason why we are here at the African American Museum, Gregory Lincoln, Freemanstown, Fourth Ward. I'll never forget the incredibly diverse group of 60,000 Houstonians who marched from Discovery Green to Houston City Hall in 2020. And as they marched from Discovery Green and came to City Hall, were greeted and met the entire Floyd family. That was an incredible day. For the most part, it was peaceful, and they demonstrated the great potential of what Houston and its people have to offer. People from all backgrounds coming together to ask for justice and honor the memory of a man whose name is now known across the globe. And I was honored to be invited by the family to speak at George Floyd's funeral, and I announced that Houston will lead the way on policing reform. And to the Floyd family, I want you to know, we kept our word. Over the past two years, the city has worked to promote local legislative actions, such as Executive Order 1-67 on policing and reform, the use of force, and the development of the Mayor's Task Force on policing reform. Larry Payne, who chaired that effort of 45 persons, did an incredible job at coming up with the reforms that we are now putting in place. Larry, I brought a copy that you and your team put together. Let me ask Larry Payne to stand and please acknowledge this young man. <laughs> Embodied in this document, are 104 recommendations that the Mayor's Task Force on Police Reform came up with. And I want you to know that of those 104, over 80 of them are now fully implemented. And uh, <laughs> Executive Order 1-67, Police Reform and Use of Force, among others, ban officers from placing their knee, their foot, or body weight on the neck of a suspect to control or contain the suspect movements. You just can't do that in the city of Houston. It bans no-knock warrants. We're not doing that anymore in the city of Houston. The executive order, along with others, states that any police officers present and observing another police officer using force that is beyond that which is reasonable under the circumstances, shall, when in a position to do so, safely intercede to prevent the use of such force. Officers shall immediately report these observations to an on-duty supervisor. You just can't see something happening and, do, and you know it's wrong and say nothing and do nothing. Eighty of these 104 mayors task force on police and reform recommendations implemented. One of them called for a deputy inspector general to separate and apart from the police to look at complaints that are coming in. We've named that person, Crystal Corafor. And Crystal is here. Crystal, I want you to stand. A former, a former district attorney and a graduate of Thurgood Marshall School of Law. And Crystal is doing an outstanding job. It called for the creation of the Office of Police and Reform and Accountability and revamping of our Independent Police Oversight Board. It called for the creation of the City of Houston Police Transparency Hubs. Now there are five other dashboards that you can look at in an interactive way and see inside of the city, the police department, Dashboards showing the use of force, disciplinary action, traffic stops, sight and release and diversity of the Houston Police Department. And you have now the ability to file a complaint with HPD. You don't have to come in person. You can do it online. And you can utilize several languages in order to file those complaints. 30-day body one camera release on all critical incidents involving HPD officers. Whether we like the footage or not, within 30 days, it must be released. 
and in our meet and confer change to, one to, to the 180-day rule, allowing disciplinary action to take place 180 days after the discovery versus the date of the incident. Community policing and investments of more than $24 million in crisis intervention. The police shouldn't have to respond to every crisis occurring in our city. There are some incidents, mental behavioral health issues, where the professionals should be, able to, should be the first ones attending to those incidents. Homelessness, substance abuse, domestic violence, over $24 million we are now placing in those categories. Those are the things that would not, let's say they would not have happened as quickly as they did without the sacrifice of George Floyd because of your brother, because of someone who grew up in Third Ward at the CUNY homes who lost his life, these reforms have been put in place. And so this city and generations to come in our city owe a great deal of gratitude to George Floyd. Now it's your job now to say his name. Say his name. George Floyd. No, say his name. George Floyd. Say his name. George Floyd. And it's George Floyd today that we remember. He should not have died the way he did. Should not have died the way he did. But he did not die in vain. And though these reforms have not been in, put in place nationally yet, they are taking place in city after city after city. And the more we remember and the more we push forward, I believe, even besides the executive order that the president is signing, that eventually Congress will also do the right thing. My hope is that today's George Floyd commemorative event will give a platform around which we gather to remember Floyd's life and continue the conversation around systematic change, racism, policing reform, and ways to make our community and world more loving and accepting of all differences. This event also highlights the ongoing efforts to collect and preserve African American history in the city of Houston. It is vital that we continue to talk about the shared history and tra trauma we experience as a society due to violent events, no matter how difficult those conversations may be, so that we can effectuate change. We must never forget his name. We must always and repeatedly say George Floyd, because George Floyd stands for so many others who live in our city. George Floyd from the CUNY homes may have lost his life, but there are a lot of George Floyds that are walking around in the tray, in the nickel, in the Fofo, in Hiram Clark, in the East End, in Fort Bend, there are a lot of George Floyd. So we want to make sure that when they grow up, they can be all that the good Lord will have them to be. And so today we honor his spirit by renewing our commitment to making our community safe and equitable. And so before I present this proclamation, let me just say this. We cannot get weary of doing good. And we can't get to the point where we become hopeless and think there is nothing that we can do. After one mass murder after another, it is so easy for people just to say, there is nothing we can do. But let me just say to you, there is always something we can do. And just because it has been doesn't no longer mean that it will always be. When people reach deep down and decide to stand up, others, I believe, will stand up as well. And I know it can happen because when I looked over and saw those kids from Ridge Point, it brought, it brought me hope. And as long as God gives us strength, there is still hope. And as long as one is standing, 
there is still hope. And why is that? Because I witnessed how somebody from the CUNY homes, Paula, that no one outside the family and that Jake Yates knew, now the name of George Floyd is reverberating all over the globe. I saw how the name, how one person brought millions of people on the streets in this country. I saw how George Floyd literally has been the conversation of almost every city in our nation. So don't tell me that you can't change things. When you stand up, you can make a difference.